Hey there, my name is Kelly Dale and I'm owner of Off the Beaded Path located in Forest City, North Carolina. It's beginning to be spring and early summer and when it gets this time of year, I don't like to wear some of my heavy jewelry. I like to do something more lightweight such as the one that I have on. So today, I'm going to teach you how to make this lightweight necklace that can be worn as a very long piece or doubled into a shorter piece. For the video, you're going to need about 30 14 millimeter acrylic rings. Now, these are available on our Etsy site, which can be found at the address right below me here. But basically, I've made two versions. Um, I have on the transparent ring version, and I'm going to show you um, the actual project with the uh, matte colored rings. But all I'm using for the project are these rings and some one millimeter piece of wax cotton. And I'm using about two yards. And then the only other thing you're going to need for the project is a, a shepherd's hook or an S hook for the actual ends of the necklace. Um, and you're just going to need the one end because it'll actually, the one end will attach into our actual ring. So that's all that you'll need. Um, we will have kits for this. We will have just the actual rings on our Etsy site and we will have kits that will have enough of the rings and the, um, the cotton. So that way, and it's going to be really, really cheap. The rings are less than 10 cent a piece, so the kit will be very cheap. And the necklace is really, really um, lightweight and very inexpensive to make for um, craft shows or, you know, if you want to wear, you know, whatever you want to do. It's a really great buy. And um, you can use any kind of bead like this, a circle, um, you know, that has the big hole in the center, a square, anything that has the big hole like this you can use for this project. So go ahead, we'll get your materials together and we'll get started. All right, so to get started, I have my 14 millimeter acrylic rings laid out in the way that I want them to look on my necklace. Now I'm gonna use five of each color, so that way I'll have 30 total rings. Now I know it's 30 because this is the length that I have measured that will wrap twice around um, a average size person's neck. If you need more, add more. It's completely up to you. This can be made as long as you want it to be so that you can either wear it very long or short. But I have my two millimeter cotton, or I'm sorry, one millimeter wax cotton cord here, and I've got my ends together. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my first color, which is I'm going to use this purple, and I'm going to slide it onto one of the cords. With my ends together, I'm going to slide it all the way down to the bottom. And I'm going to take and make a knot. Now, I'm not too worried about where these knots are at in my actual piece. If you're very worried about the knot, you can use a pair of round nose pliers to actually stick inside of the knots so that you can move it if it needs to be moved. But I'm just going to take and I'm going to put a knot up close to my ring. And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so that you can see a little bit better as to what I'm doing. So I have my knot, and this is actually going to be the very first ring, and this is going to be what my shepherd's hook or my S hook will hook into on the other side of the necklace. So I have my first bead on. I'm going to come back to the top. I'm going to take my two ends, and I'm going to take the next ring, and I'm going to stick them through, stick the threads through the ring going opposite ways. I'm going to put my two threads together, just like this. I'm going to pull the ring down to meet the knot. Now, this is completely up to you. On the ones that I've made, I don't worry about getting the knot super close to the ring. If you don't want the rings to move, you'll want the knot to be very, very, very close to the ring. But I like the movement, I like my, you know, my ring to be able to move, so I don't worry about getting the knot too close to it. So what I do is I take and I start the knot here, go ahead and pull my thread through, and then I just use my fingers to place the knot so that when the ring is in at its widest part, the knot is there just like this. 
All right, then you're ready to go to your next one. Now you can do all the rings the same color, but I think it's really fun, especially for the spring and the summer to do different varieties of colors. So one thread goes through one way, the other thread goes through the ring the other way. I'm gonna grab my two ends and I'm gonna pull the ring so that it comes down to my other rings here. And I'm going to make a knot. And again, I'm just going to use my fingers to kind of place the knot where I want it. And it's okay if every knot is not exactly, um, you know, the distance between the next knot. That's completely okay. That's the whole fun thing about this, this necklace. So again, I'm going to get my two ends here. I'm going to come to the next color. And I'm going to cross through the ring like I'm making an X through it. Hold the two threads. Pull the thread down. Just like this. Take and make a knot. And then pull the thread down to meet the ring. Again, get your ends together. Put your next color on. I'm going to cross through my ring in opposite directions. Pull the cord down to your other knots. Start the knot. And then use your fingers to place the knot. I want to show you one more. This is my last color of this set. So I'm going to pick up my pink and I'm going to stick one thread through one way, one thread through the other way. I'm going to pull it down. I'm going to make my knot. And I'm going to use my fingers to place the knot. And you will want to continue adding on your rings until you have 30 rings on your thread. Alright, so this is my very first ring. I've got all my rings on there and this is the very last ring that I put on. And you can see I did my knot just like I normally would. Now, what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to take a good pair of cutters or scissors, whichever you have, and go ahead and trim the extra little piece, just a one piece, cut it off of your thread. Now, I'm going to take, and I'm going to make a knot. I'm going to take this one piece, and I'm going to try and do a knot, and here's the thing. You want to try and keep this a very small knot. I have very big hands, so it is hard for me to do this. But you want to try and keep your knot small. Okay, pull your knot nice and tight. Really good and tight. And then go ahead and trim the excess off of that knot. So that this is what you're left with. I'm ready to add my little shepherd's hook. And... What I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up a little bit so that when I do this, it will go on there pretty good. And I want it just a little tighter. There we go. That's perfect because I want to be, I want to have to kind of force it in there just a little bit. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the other end here. I'm going to thread my little knot that I've made into it and close, making sure you get it good and close so that now you have your end put on the necklace.
So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It was short and simple, but sometimes that's what life calls for is short and simple. So enjoy, be sure, and go to our Etsy site, which is listed right below me, and see all of our new goodies that we've got listed this week, plus pick up the kit for the necklace. And then be sure to come back next week when I'm going to show you how to make a fun new project. I hope you guys have a wonderful week, and don't forget about our contest that we've got going on. If you haven't heard about it, go back to our previous video and be sure and look at the book review I did for Sabine's new book called Beaded Fantasies and um, get registered to enter our contest. And you guys